is going on everybody it is your boy matt stingray thanks for checking in to the rock the watch channel guys today we are going to do a head-to-head -head battle of my five panda dial chronographs that i have picked up over the course of this channel i'm always on the never-ending search for a panda dial chronograph that i really like i really like a rolex daytona but I am not in the position to spend 20 grand on a watch. And even if I had 20 grand, I don't know that it would be a Daytona. Now, that's a whole nother video. So I got these five. I've done uh, unboxing reviews of all of them. I'll put links to those videos down below in the description. Go check them out. And we are going to find out today which one I choose to keep, keep or maybe two or maybe all five. Uh, probably not all five. I might keep two. I think I'm going to narrow it down to one. And we're going to do this Panda Dial shootout today. So do quick brief overviews. Give you what I paid for them and what I like, dislike, stuff like that. And then we'll slowly weed them out as we figure out which one will stay in the collection. At least for the time being. I don't know. I might get rid of all of them. Okay, so let's start from left to right and work our way over. So this is the San Martin, I think it's SN018, Panda Dial Chronograph. Uh, got it off AliExpress uh, from the San Martin store. I wanna say it was about $260, $240 maybe. And it is, it actually is a really good watch. You can catch the AR coding right there. Uh, three sub dials, running seconds, tenth of a second, and 30 minute um, a timer. There's the date right here. As you can see, it's a forehand. This is an actual chronograph. Hit the pusher. There it goes right there. Boom. It's rolling. Second hand. Stop it. On around. Adjust the date right there. Like I said, I've done uh, done um, unboxings and uh, full reviews of all these watches. Put that link below. Got very similar clasp to my Rolex Milgauss, and I gave away what I am rocking today. But uh, we'll go through that again also at the end of the video. So yeah, there's the San Martin, the most, exp I believe this is the most expensive, well, maybe not, maybe close to the, the most expensive. One of these other ones was darn close to the same price. And it's a build quality is really good. And one small problem with the bracelet, uh, talk about that in the video. i really impressed with this watch. Really like the way the dial looks. Very simple, there's no, there's no words, no anything on the dial except the San Martin symbol. Nothing on the back, very clean. Nothing on the bracelet. It's not branded all over with San Martin or anything like that. Really like this one. So this one, this one definitely gets gets a thumbs up. We'll set that one to the side. Next is the Invicta Speedway. Ah, well, um, as you can see, this is the second hand. So you might ask yourself if that's the second hand, if the big hand is the second hand, and there's hour, minute, and seconds, how are you able to use the tachometer on the bezel for this watch? Well, you're not. Uh, you can't. So this, I don't know if you could call this a chronograph. Uh, this is also the one, this one and the other one we're going to check out are the closest to a Daytona, a Rolex Daytona, closest homage to those, but I know you unscrew the pushers, hit it, and there goes the second starting right there. So you can technically time things, but you can't use the tachometer and it's not like a traditional chronograph. You know, it might actually not be a chronograph because 
that's the second hand. I, I don't know. Bracelet's okay. Press clasp. You know, it, it, this is the one that says Invicta on it 16 times. So <laughs> go check out the full review of that one. Uh, I think I paid $68 for this watch. So for that price, not bad. It's about three times cheaper than that one, maybe four times cheaper than that one. So there, there's something to be said for that. But it is an homage. It does kind of have a cool, let's see if I can get it in the camera, texture dial. See where it says Speedway and, you know, it is what it is, but I don't fancy this one too much. So let's set that one to the side. Next, the Dan Henry. 1964 1964 uh, this is a cool watch um, build quality awesome uh, colorway awesome dig the blue chronograph hand dig the white on the tip that contrasts really well with the black tachometer chapter ring uh, you know it's very cool the beads are, has a real beads of rice bracelet uh, sapphire coated mineral glass Aston Martin DB5 on the back it's a racing inspired watch super cool super retro date at the four o'clock that doesn't bother me at all some people bothers I actually kind of dig it so it's actually really cool a little bit small for me though I think this is about 38 millimeters the way it wears on my wrist I don't know a little bit a little bit small uh, for me. That's my one big gripe. The clasp is okay. It's a it's a budget friendly, a, the lower end press clasp, but it's it's pretty good. Uh, it's a beautiful watch, uh, and I think I paid I don't know somewhere around two forty two sixty for this thing, and it came with a bunch of stuff. Um, I reveal all that in the unboxing, so go check that sucker out. So there's the Dan Henry nineteen sixty four. Next up, we got. The Orient Neo 70s Classic. This is a cool watch. Very retro. Bracelet is the, you know, it's Orient, so they're owned by Seiko. So they got a similar folded bracelet thing. You can see, let's see, you can pick up the lines right there in the side. So it's a budget friendly bracelet. It's a really cool chronograph with. Let's see here water resistance 100 meters made in japan this is a this is a really cool watch actually this is a jdm model uh which is J japanese domestic market you can't buy these over here i forget where i found this one they got to come straight from japan I unbox all that stuff you see all that stuff in my unboxings for all these watches I, and it's super cool one of my only gripes about this sucker other than the lower end bracelet is that the dial if you look let me get one of these compare let's just compare it to the dan henry look how bright white the dan henry dial is and this one's more of a an off-white let me get the invicta again bright white and see what the same artan looks next to it yeah see so this one actually if you hit it right in the camera it's actually a real light kind of silver color so i mean i i'm into the more the bright stark white dials um let's see if i can find another i got another watch over here here's a, a really budget friendly 50 dollars star king look how white that dial is compared to the orient i think this watch would just pop so much better if it had a bright bright white dial but and in the pictures when i bought it looked like it was a bright white dial i got it and i immediately noticed oh whoa hang on a sec that's kind of you know kind of not as white as i thought it was but still very cool watch uh, i want to say I, like i said I, I paid like 240 for this one and last but definitely least is the pagani design chronograph the pd 1644 i think it is yeah now there's tons of videos out there on this sucker i think i paid like 61 dollars for this thing 
And again, it's much like this one. It is almost a direct homage to the R-O-L-E-X Daytona. But this one, I personally, and I know a lot of people have had, haven't had any problems, and I get some hate in the comments about this sucker, but this particular watch, this sample of one, is a ridiculous hot mess. It's a pile of junk. Go watch my full review of this sucker. Like I said, I'll put a link down below. It is just, it has got so many issues from the sapphire uh, crystal being canted. I don't know if I could pick it up there. It is canted. The buttons stick in, don't pop out. The bracelet sticks. The, there's just so many issues in there. I can't even go through them all. It'd be, well, it was its own. I was going to say it'd be its own video in itself, but it was, and I did it. And I document all those things there. And this is just a hot mess. Yeah, you, you know, you, you take a gamble when you, you pick up these things. I've seen them where they're, where they're, people say they're okay. And other times where like this one, it's just falling apart. It's a hot mess. So this one is definitely off the table. We're going to get that out of here. That's off the list. I'm not keeping that sucker. I don't know if I'll throw it away, give it away to somebody if they want to try to fix it. Or maybe they want to review it on their channel for another reviewer. Another one that's going to go is this one. This one, this Invicta, it's just, it's got too many Invictas on it, man. I mean, I think if they take off all the Invictas except maybe that, even take that one off, just leave the bird, it might be a lot better. But that being said, it's not a bad watch, especially for $68. But that one is going to go. It's not, it's not going to say. This one... By the time I release this video, the person should have it and should be enjoying it. I'm sending this off to a buddy of mine uh, who has a, uh, an awesome YouTube channel, Average Joe Watch Reviews. Go check this one out. He should have this one by the time I release this video and hopefully he'll do his own video. And I'm giving this to him because he has shown interest in it. I don't wear it. Uh, I, I don't really enjoy it. Hopefully I'll send it to him and he can enjoy it. Um, and do great things with it. So that one I'm going to set aside. So now we are down to two. The final two. And it's fitting that they are roughly the same price, roughly the same specs, features, build quality, although this one has a better bracelet, uh, a little bit cooler looking features. Uh, but this one is a fantastically retro watch. Too. I'm considering at this point keeping both of them, but if I had to only choose one, I would choose the San Martin SN018. Uh, I, the date, the forehand, the date is very cool. Its build quality is awesome. I had one little problem with it. I'll show you here. One little problem, which was this little diver extension thing will not lock in. So I just adjusted the bracelet to count that as one link and, over, and overcompensate it. I could have sent it back, but sending it all the way back to China, it took three months to get here anyway. So I'm not down with sending it all the way back to China. Uh, but this is this is an awesome watch. The bracelet is is super similar. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll put it in here. What am I rocking today? I've mentioned it before, my Ro Rolex Milgauss. But look at the bracelet on this sucker and look at the bracelet on the Milgauss. I mean, it is, let me take this off. It is practically a direct copy. Look at, I mean, I, I could probably take it off this watch and put it on the Milgauss. So this is the one that wins, but let me go through, I forgot something. I'll go through and, and show you what they all look like on the wrist. Um, and here we'll start with the winner first. And there's the winner of the Rock the Watch Panda Dial Chronograph Shootout. Okay, there it is. San Martin SN018. Let's take that one off, set it aside. Let's get the, the runner up, second place. The Orient Neo 70s Panda. That's a very cool watch. Very cool watch. Third place is the Dan Henry 1964. See, I just. I don't know. I have a seven and a half inch wrist. It just seems, just seems real tiny. I got some smaller watches, but this, it's just a little bit too small for me. 
but it's a, it's an excellent watch. Wipe this stuff off here, it's dust. That's number three. Number four, Invicta Speedway. Looks like a steel bezel Daytona. Number four and number five. It's a darn thing. This thing is. I don't even know if this one's fit for my wrist. No, it's not. I didn't even fit it. I never wore it. I got out the box and it just fell apart on me, basically. So. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's, whew, it's build quality is not great. Just not great. So there it is, guys. The battle of the Panda Dial chronographs so guys if you like this type of content please like and subscribe leave a comment down below and as always rock that watch